okay and for you i am giving you the permission so you use zoom recording only because i heard that recording which you sent me earlier right ah oh. okay so that is a uh, lot of noise is there because i think you are using webex or something right yeah don't use that webex is not good I means it's uh, did not cancel that noise cancellation so oh, you can okay. use zoom itself recording zoom also you can from your end also you can record started okay fine <clears throat> so uh, we'll start uh, today's session till now we have discussed let me take you through the portion so you can better understand so till now we have done with the introduction to linux right and the basic system setup is there that is also we have done it graphical installation we have done it linux architecture and file system done it basic commands we have done it okay i think for some of the commands you might uh, you don't have right first session you haven't attended okay first session that uh, uh, yeah. yes so previous videos i have already forwarded it to you okay only thing is if you this one i need to verify uh, i have verified means uh, multiple uh, basic commands are there okay okay so i'll forward it every all uh, parts of it okay so if okay. i'll go here i can show you where is that <clears throat> so basic command you can see part 1 part 2 part 3 part 4 5 i think from the link uh, i note concept you, you, have, here. you have not deleted anything no whatever recording is there no no i have not deleted because sometimes so uh, it's it with you uh, okay. after once a session or in between now uh, we'll meet and i'll copy it from you fully okay okay fine i'll so, bring my hard disk and copy it okay so this is there okay and if possible monday or tuesday it's already for me and i'll come and meet you okay fine, fine. so are you working okay. on monday or april yeah Mar uh, monday is uh, i am working okay and uh, it's in general only okay i'll be in general shift so i'll update you once i'll reach home okay 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 so basic command managing file system and partitions we have done it correct so yes. apart from this if i'll talk about more into lvm side also we have done okay and user administration and group administration also we have done it network configuration yeah. and troubleshoot wise last uh we i uh, mean last session was done with network configuration and troubleshooting now we yeah. are moving ahead with very much important not only in term of uh, uh, you can say one part of linux because this is entire linux is dependent on this booting sorry okay booting procedure and kernel parameter because ultimately okay. uh, from day one i am telling linux is nothing but it's a kernel right yeah so <clears throat> let's get into the topic so booting procedure okay and kernel parameter so booting process see when your system is power it on when you power it on your system so and yes. after a few minutes you see the linux login prompt will come right yeah correct so have you yes. ever wondered okay what happened behind the scene means we need to go behind the scenes like every movie it's we know it's a 3 hours movie right but yeah. uh, the making of that movie means that behind the scenes it will take time yeah. some years maybe 2 years like that right yeah. so it's, it's what, correct so ag exactly same linux operating system it's not at all only about the command prompt you are logging to a command prompt and you are firing some yeah. commands and all right so there are yeah. so many uh, background or you can say behind the scenes or services or applications are running behind that one okay yes. so yes to understand that one means to understand the scenes from the time you press the power button until the linux login prompt appears okay yes. so that is called that is your ultimately that is your the following actually means this is a very high level you can say stages of a typical linux boot process okay okay so what i have written here is the this is very high level okay this is not like a uh, uh, normal i am talking about okay 
so this is a very typically means this is this is like uh, when you power it on your uh, means particular uh, linux operating system from that point till it's running to coming to run level okay yes. these are the different stages that a linux operating system follows okay or you can say it goes through okay so what all those six uh, stages of booting process okay what all yeah. all those uh, services or you can say run levels kernel init grub mbr bios these all are all those six stages so first one will start yeah. with bios okay then it will be moving or it will be executing your mbr okay bios is nothing but it's a basic input output system okay yeah. mbr is nothing but it's a master, master boot master. recorder correct and yeah, then it's yeah. it will be executing your grub grub will be executing your kernel kernel will be executing your init and init will be executing your run level finally when all the services will up and running you can say yeah. okay fine my system is up and running and i can go ahead and execute the commands okay but yeah but this is just for understanding okay this is we know okay these are the phases okay fine first one bios then mbr then grub then kernel init run level no but there yeah. are many things happening behind the scenes so we need yes. to understand what is that exactly behind the scene yes okay sai okay so yeah. first we'll start with very uh, detailed description i am going to tell okay later on okay. you guys can uh, write it down means uh, you need to listen to the video again and, and you need no, to i will make a note whenever you are telling i will make a note down to me correct fine that's good habit right sign okay so just note it down whatever things i am talking about for the bios okay so okay. Okay. again what is bios stands for so bios stands for your basic input and output okay. system first of all okay yeah. first thing what is the second thing bios perform some system integrity checks okay yeah. see when you do something okay obviously suppose i am giving you an example okay so when you are uh, just for an example when you are transferring money to someone okay you do some pre checks right means the what are yeah. those pre checks means you need to get the account number you need to get that person number you need to get the ifsc code right so you will validating yes. first right you will be doing yes. some validation you will doing some sanity checks or some system integrity checks like normal in a layman language if i'll talk about right yeah or uh, if you buy something also you want to see that product product right before buying it right how it's uh, yeah. it will be uh, uh, behavior after i'll buy that product right so that yes. pre that is what that is what i am talking about means once it will be getting into bios okay when you power yeah. it on your particular power button your cpu yes. or anything okay when you are it's if it's a virtual machine you need to power it on right okay yes. so from that point it goes to bios but bios is doing what first thing it will be do a system integrity check means it check. will be checking yeah. your hardware okay means everything is fine or not means is there any problem or anything is not working properly correct yes okay so moving towards the next means what it will be doing then it will be searches loads and execute the boot loader yes mainly once it will be done with the system integrity check okay it will be search for what it will be searches and it will be loading your and it will be executing your boot loader that is your yes. mbr it will be actually me searching for this mbr only once the system yeah. will be power it on okay so it will be searching yeah. for the one cd he is done with uh, mb uh, bios is done with the system integrity check it will be searching for the boot loader where it is it is a boot loader is located and all and he will execute yeah. the boot loader so now the task yeah. of bios is done okay yes now the ball is in the court of mbr means now the execution is moving from bios to mbr if i'll talk in technical okay sai yeah so yeah. what will be the next thing is once the boot loader program is detected means still i am talking more into bios side okay once the yeah. boot loader program is detected and loaded into the memory bios gives the control to whom bios give the control to the mbr 
means now your mbr is executed by whom now your mbr is means your bios is bios is executed the mbr getting yeah. my point fine yeah. any doubt here yeah. no no okay fine now you can see means it's very simple term if you, you talk about bios loads and execute the mbr done his task is done bios task is yeah. done right now yes. moving towards yeah. the mbr this is very much important listen to this one very much because very depth i am going to talk about in this one side okay okay so <clears throat> what is mbr so mbr is nothing but it's a master boot recorder what does that mean yes. master boot recorder means what so master boot recorder does it it's nothing but it is you can say it is located in the first sector of bootable disk see yes. when your disk obviously i uh, when you install a particular linux operating system correct so that yeah. time i have told you there is a minimum requirement to install a linux operating system what is that minimum yeah. requirement that is slash root is required slash boot is required and swap memory is required okay yeah. so there would be some particular disk will be there where you are going to store your bootable files and uh, 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 bootable files right yeah correct so to understand correct. this one see so it actually my mbr it is located in the first sector of bootable disk first yes. sector of bootable disk typically like i have told you slash dev slash hda is there these are the different different yeah. hard disk right uh, yes. these are the different yeah. partitions having yeah. with naming convention if it is a sata then it will be a yeah. slash dev slash sda right if it is yes. a ide then it, it will be slash dev slash hda correct yes correct sign okay so it is actually may located in the first sector of bootable disk that is your either it will be a dev slash hda or either it will be a dev slash sda okay yeah. now the next thing mbr is less than 512 bytes okay okay mbr is less than 512 byte size okay fine i understand mbr is 512 byte size lekin what is this 512 bytes okay so actually when this 512 bytes is divided into three part okay okay so these three components we can say the first part will be your primary boot loader first okay. part is your primary boot loader and this okay. is of 446 bytes okay see we uh, uh, we have uh, first of all what i said is okay mbr master boot recorder where is that master boot recorder this master boot recorder is uh, located in the first sector of bootable disk that is slash dev slash sda fine now the next thing is how 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 big is this mbr so mbr is 512 bytes okay and it's further divided into three parts okay yeah. so the yeah. first part will be your primary boot loader and it is having your 446 bytes and it is having yes. the primary boot loader information inside it yeah correct yeah now what is the second component here so second component is your partition table information i told you when you formatted a, that time i was talking about part probe hyphen s command i was executing you remember uh, yeah. after you partition we need to update the partition table information where is that partition table information is going here yes second component so what is the second component of this mbr so second component of this mbr is your partition table information which is of 64 bytes so now you can okay. you can see okay if i use yeah. a calculator here so 446 bytes okay i have used for what for primary boot loader it is go, it is uh, yes. primary boot loader info okay so that is of your 446 byte what is the second component second component is your partition table information what is the size of that one is 64 bytes right yeah correct sign yes yeah. so still 512 total size of mbr is 512 so now it's coming yeah. to 510 where is that 2 2 uh, bytes is go, going where so that 2 bytes is your the third component that is your mbr validation check 
that is for allocated for two bytes. You need to do a MVR validation check. Correct. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So if you add two, so it will be total five hundred twelve bytes. Getting my point. Yes. Yeah. So your MVR is five hundred twelve bytes. Okay. It is located in the. It is located in the first sector of bootable disk. Okay. And it is having three components. The first component is having four forty six bytes. That is your primary bootloader information. Second thing is your partition table information, which is of sixty-four byte, and third thing is your MBR validation check, which is of yes. two bytes. Understand, yes. sir? Okay. Yeah. Now, okay, fine. I have done with MBR. Now, what MBR will do now? So, MBR it contains the information about the grub. That is called yeah. your this one, the Grand Unified Bootloader. Okay. it yeah. contains the information of grub so if i talk in very simple so mbr loads and execute the grub now see okay. when bios has load and execute the mbr mbr after uh, understanding mbr or functions right yeah. mbr same way loads and execute the grub now the ball is in the court of grub now the execution is move ahead from mbr to your grub right yeah so yeah. now moving to grub so what does mean grub so grub is nothing but it's a grand unified bootloader yes okay so let me before going into because see till here bios i can show you okay bios also we can see in linux operating system f12 bios settings we do right there we can yes. see there only you can see your mbr will be there okay but how you are going to see that grand unified bootloader okay yes so before going and explaining about the grand unified bootloader let me take you through the hands on path okay okay Uh, have you downloaded the uh, Linux seven? Linux seven. Yes, I. Uh, RHL seven. You are talking about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, seven only. Mel, you want to see the graphical installation of seven? Huh. Okay, so uh, I so I think I forwarded you that video. If you face any problem or anything, if I'll get time, I'll take you through okay. how to installation because it's just a installation. Okay. No, it's and a that's fine. That's fine. No, some yeah. queries are there. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, during installation, I will see on it. Okay. What happens when I try to install my OS? It is directly going into the command line only. It is not allowing me to select that options. Okay. Okay. Understand. But uh, okay. but uh, sometimes when I try it, it is allowing me to do it. I don't know why it is. Okay. I need to check that one. Okay. So one ninety two one sixty eight dot triple two dot. What did you? Oh. Okay, sir. So <clears throat> coming back to the point. Grab. so grub means nothing but it's a grand unified bootloader okay so what does this grub does okay what is the role of this grub so like bios right so bios main jobs to the if you, i if i'll talk more into nutshell okay so majorly major things if somebody is going to ask you tell me one thing what you know about bios straight away no need to tell okay it's a basic input output system you can tell it will it does a system integrity check okay 
Yes. Same way, MBR has the information of GRUB, but MBR is a 512 bytes memory. Okay, and yeah. it has three components. You can explain him straight away. But when somebody yes. is going to ask you, what is GRUB? Okay, so GRUB you need to be there are. Uh, it's you can say this is the main stage of your operating system yes. because why? <clears throat> The first thing is GRUB stand for Grand Unified Bootloader. Okay, if you have multiple kernels, okay, if I am going here, you remember right? How to check your kernel sign? You name hyphen R, right? R, okay. okay. So yes. if you if you want to see your kernel, okay, you can see that I have one kernel over here. So it is showing me one kernel, right? That is 2.6.32573.el16x86 is the architecture and 64 is the uh, yes. it's yes correct. So so the thing is, but grub is actually means what it does is okay. So grub if you have multiple kernels, this is one kernel. Suppose you have three, four, five kernels. Okay, that is already installed. Somebody is going to ask you, okay, Sai, go ahead. This is my the uh, as of now for this operating system for this version. Okay, if I'll talk about cat slash etc, red hat release. Okay, so current version of this one is 6.7. Okay, I want to upgrade it. Okay, okay, or I want to update it. Sorry, not upgrade. Remember, this also sometimes they'll ask in interview what is the difference between update and upgrade. Okay. So I am just updating. Okay, I am not upgrading means you are upgrading from six to seven, correct? But updating means if you are updating from six dot seven to six dot eight, right? So obviously you need to update your kernel version also, right? Sign. Hello, yes. sign. Sign. You are able to understand? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So what I am telling is here is if you have multiple kernel, suppose there is one kernel already there and i have installed one another kernel also i have not uh, removed this kernel but i have installed another kernel on top of this okay yes so if you have your system is having multiple kernels so you have to choose which one to be executed yes let me show you one more thing okay anyways i'm going to explain now only okay So this is very much uh, previously also I was explaining about this file, right? Slash boot grub grub dot con file will be there. Correct. So here if I can show you here, you can see it is showing your kernel this one only, right? That is your one kernel. That is your kernel image. Okay. But if I have installed two, three kernels. Okay. So then this HD zero, right? It will be showing in HD one means and it will be if you install three kernels, then it will be showing in HD zero, HD one, and HD three. Yes. Getting my point, sign. So if you yes. have multiple kernels, so you can execute which whichever you want to execute. So that is the role of your grand unified boot loader. Loader. Yes. Understanding my point? Okay. So then something, something equal. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah. Please, something please. equal to when we in Windows while installation. Mm -hmm. If you put multiple OS, it will show us a OS option booting in the initial yes. stage. Correct, correct, same correct. Thing. No, yeah, right. Exactly same thing. Same thing here also. Okay, in Linux. But what this grub screen means? This grub displays a splash screen. Wait for a few seconds, and if you don't enter anything, it loads the default kernel image as I specified in the grub configuration file. What does it mean? This sentence. So this sentence is telling you, okay, when you see, when you power it on your Linux machine, you saw, I think that stage uh, you, you are not able to see here. I, when I have started that particular, this red hat. Okay. So the time when it starts, okay. So at the time it will come to, it will show you your kernel. Okay. So if you have installed three or four kernels over there, 
so if you not select uh, which kernel i want to go ahead with if which kernel you want to execute at this time at, at this point of time okay so by default it will take from operating system from his side only so it will take a default kernel it will execute with that one and it will be your operating system up and running yes so that that particular time or that particular screen is called splash screen yes means it will be a splashes for one or two second and then it will be gone so yes. remember why that splash screen is very much important because when suppose you have forgot okay root user password you know right but suppose if you forgot your root user password then that splash screen you need to come back and from there only you can execute the later on commands to recover your root user password okay okay that is your single user mode that i'll explain in this session only okay okay sai yes. fine so this is called your third point so third point what i am telling is okay so grub displays a splash screen wait for few seconds and if you don't enter anything it loads the default kernel which of whichever kernel it will be taking as a default okay as a that kernel is what that kernel is a image only okay that will be a image only okay and is is specified which in is specified in the grub configuration file what is that grub configuration file this is your grub configuration file so whatever the things you are going to execute okay mm -hmm. suppose if you have your own kernel called uh, call sai kernel okay you created your own kernel sai kernel so if you yeah. want to execute sai kernel so under this file only uh, boot grub grub.con file only you need to put that entry and then later on when your system is booting up it will be booted up with the kernel which you want to execute with getting my yes. point sai okay so now the third point what is that third point is so the third point uh, sorry fourth point what is that fourth point is grub has the knowledge of your file system yes why it is telling the knowledge of your file system i told you right what is kernel main role so kernel main role if you remember i told it controls security it manages yes. resource right yeah. correct so resource yes. managing how you are going to resource by your file systems only right Yes. means your file system is what file system is this one only if you do df hyphen h these are your file systems only right you remember mount slash we uh, mounted somewhere right file system yeah. we formatted in for uh, managing file system managing partitions and file system correct yeah. yeah so ultimate thing is grub has the knowledge of your file system okay and it's going to load your file system with the help of kernel yes fine so very much important in grub that is first thing is your uh, cat slash boot grub grub dot con file is here this is very much important file because here only your kernel image is going to store or whichever yes. kernel if you want to execute you need to put it the entry over here Okay. okay so there is also one more file i just wanted to point okay. out if, that one again, okay if you are making any um, if you are putting another kernel we have to put the entry in this isn't it no 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 see what will happen suppose if i am doing a, 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 a means software package management i'll take you through guys okay means how to install a package so kernel is like same way only okay so if i do rpm okay just for don't uh, no need to confuse here rpm hyphen qa if you want to search for a package okay kernel so see it's showing me two kernels here right different kernels so these are the oh. kernel packages are there right so same way this package is there so if i want to install the latest suppose what is this version of this kernel this version of this kernel is where is that if you do u name hyphen r so this kernel version is 553 uh, 573 right so i want to upgrade it to the upper means uh, update it right so that will be some 600 or something some version will be there okay so i need to fetch it from the repository and again i need to do a command rpm hyphen ivh okay and then your particular kernel name this one like this yes. 
So if you install this one, ultimately that entry will be coming here in this file yep. by default. Yep. Getting my point, Sai? Yes, yes. Fine. So the thing is, what I want to convey here is okay. So this file is very much important. So uh, you remember I have talked about the soft link and hard link. Yes. How to create a soft link and a hard link? Okay. So there is a file. Okay. This file is in slash boot grub grub dot conf is there. This is the configuration file for your grub. Okay. So there is a soft link for this one. There is a shortcut file for this grub dot conf. What is that grub dot com cat slash etc grub dot com? See here also same entry is there. You can see, right? So if I do ll, okay, and then this file. So here you can see it's a soft link, right? Yes. Correct. Yes. How to identify sign if it's a link file l, right? L right, yeah. Starting with L, so it's a link file, and yeah. this is this is your soft file because the main file is in slash boot grub grub dot con file is, and this is your shortcut file. So if you delete yeah. this file, what will happen? No, nothing, nothing will happen. happen. This, Correct. This but if you happen. delete this one, uh, that's your thing. Gone. Yes, that's what I the concept of that. I know. I remember I have explained. Yes. I know, yeah. correct? Yes, yes. Okay. In increase Good. side. Yes. Yes. Correct. Correct side. Okay. So this is all about this grub grub dot con file is there. Okay. So here multiple things are there. Uh, like init rd is there. Okay. You have splash image image is there. So init rd is nothing but it's a initial ram disk. Uh, so in yeah. the means uh, kernel also I'll explain what is this init rd. Okay. Okay. What is the next thing? As you notice from the above information, above information means this information. Yes. This is the information. Okay. So this information contains your kernel and init RD image. Yes. So this is your kernel image only, right? And here also yes. there is a init RD image. So two images yes. you will be getting in this file. First of all, your kernel image, and second is your init RD image. That is your init RM FS. Okay. So in case of your kernel gets panic, your kernel suppose it's not able to uh, mount the file system. Ultimately, kernel related to your file system only. Okay. So it's not able to mount. Then you need to take this init RD to recover. Okay. I'll explain that one. Don't worry about that one. Okay. So in simple, if I talk about so grub. Now grub grand unifier the main task is to load okay and execute the kernel and init rd image. Understand, sir? Yes. Okay. So <clears throat> the next thing is your I have done with this BIOS, MBR, and grub. Okay. So your kernel. This is very much important. Your kernel. Okay. Why? Because yeah. everything is totally dependent on this kernel. Okay. So should we go ahead and should we stop here only? Yeah, I can go ahead. Also. Okay. Because after that, I thought uh, I'll divide into three three parts. Okay. Because this will be kernel and your run label and init is more important. Uh, in term of this, at least it will take uh, one hour more than. Uh, then we'll do it with, uh, tomorrow with that guys. Yes, Otherwise, that's what I'm should... planning. Okay, so uh, for their questions also you will be come to know because all yes, the questions are mainly they are going to uh, take it through this kernel in it and run level only. The main yes. means uh, main phases of booting process. So that's fine. BIOS you understand, MBR you understand, GRUB you understand. But the questions will be mainly coming from this kernel. So kernel is having init RD, right? So to recover anything, to recover your file system, so init RD you need to ah. take the help. Okay. In it will be like same. I was complete continuously explaining uh, three four things, right? This is one command: chk config hyphen hyphen list to check which all services are running. So here you can see suppose one service is running. Check take take any service. Okay, I am taking this service. Okay, so I am taking this service and I am grapping. Okay, grape this one. So you can see these are your different run levels will be there. Okay, 
so where is this run level if you suppose on or off do anything so it will be depending upon completely your run level is having total seven stages okay same like your booting process having six stages so your run level is also having some seven stages or you can say seven steps not seven step it is a seven stages only okay so yeah. those stages will be there and uh, that will come under in it and finally your run level so how your run level is going to execute and what all the services under that one fine which all files will be there which is very much important uh, we are going to see and how here only i am going to show you as a troubleshooting part how you can recover your single user password I mean sorry uh, your root user password suppose you as of now i know okay uh, the root user right correct so root if i log in as a root i can put it uh, the password but if you forgot you want to reset that password how you are going to reset that password so that i can show you that is also an rhcsa means the red hat certified system administrator exam so the first question only you need to do in the exam okay okay sir sure sure so any doubt till now no this is clear for me this is up to grab uh, i can understand so it's clear right this is clear okay fine so i'm stopping the video here only okay oh. and uh, i'll be sharing this video to everyone um, to you pankaj and uh, uh, ankur okay and the previous videos also basic command videos i'll uh, forward it to you today only okay okay and that graphical installation part uh, whenever we'll get time uh, we'll sit together and uh, i'll explain you how okay fine sign yes yes okay so happy diwali to you happy diwali okay. to you okay to uh, you and your family yeah yeah so wish you the same merry <laughs> okay. christmas okay okay i have some doubts here apart from this okay and not this little linux yeah 